Kia ora Sean, no mai, hara mai, welcome to our place. Thank you Stacey. What are we going to make today? Well you know we're just going to do some really simple, we're going to do uh, meatballs and, and pasta. Uh, it's one of my favourite dishes, it brings us all together as a family and uh, it's kind of one of our signature dishes at our restaurant Gusto at the Grand. And then we're going to show you to make a really good pasta. Ooh, mai te tima tangane, so right from the beginning. But first of all we're on the sauce? Yeah sure. I'm going to turn this pan on, I'm just going to pop some olive oil in here. Can you um, slice some garlic for me? Just nice and thin. Oil's nice and warm now. Mm -hmm. You can just pop in your garlic. So we're just going to let it simmer away there and we're just going to let it go a little bit translucent, a little bit see-through. We don't want it to be caramelised because it might, it'll change the flavour of the sauce. Hanga kai whakauru mo te ranu. So what are the ingredients for the sauce from here? So we've just got uh, a cans of tomatoes, we've got uh, some passata, um, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt, and obviously the garlic and all the oil. It's so easy, this dish. So uh, we're just going to throw in our tomatoes. So this is three cans, and then a cup full of passata. Passata um, is actually pure tomato, crushed. It's just the essence of summer. It's just got everything in there you imagine tomato should taste like. But there's no onions, no parsley, no basil, no garlic, just pure tomato. Like you said, oh yeah, that henne romati, that's, that's summer right in there. Yeah. This sauce takes about three hours, so it's just going to kind of simmer away really gently. Just builds up a beautiful kind of rich flavour. Now, Rita, wai ho te ranuki ko na, so we're going to leave the sauce just doing its thing. What mm. are we up to next? We should make the meatballs next. This is the fun thing. We're going to get our hands dirty now. Pai <laughs> kyo, that sounds good to me. Uh, we'll take some uh, pork mince and veal mince. Uh -huh. It's not an awful lot, it's probably about half a kilo. We're going to take some breadcrumbs and we've got some milk. Uh -huh. We're just going to add the milk to the breadcrumbs and let that swell up. And it's a really good binding agent and it'll kind of lighten up the meatballs and make them more delicate. Uh -huh. We can pop that in. Oh, it feels good too, it's like baby cereal. <laughs> <laughs> so we have two types of cheese here. There's pecorino and there's parmesan. Probably about half a cup of each, I imagine. I don't know if you want to crack an egg in on mm -hmm. there as well. And I'm going to chop this parsley. I'm just going to pop in a little bit of garlic as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm mixing this all up? Yeah. Aye. When you say aye, is that Maori for yes? Yes, all yeah, right. but the same as Yorkshire. Irish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aye. Aye, aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, you know, I think we could just add a little bit of passata just to loosen it a little bit more. Just a small glug. Hanumi tia rano tia, and mix that up again. Sure. And that's going to give it that really delicate, moist flavour. But what we're going to do next, we're just going to take some breadcrumbs. Just going to take our polpetti, roll them in our hands. Penetirahi, so about as big as your cup like of your hand. Like a golf ball, I think, would be good. Do you play? Oh, I'm not very dexterous. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was so busy making sticky buns and fairy cakes when I was a lad. <laughs> My dad was an academic, and uh, he could tell at a very early age I probably wasn't going to follow in his footsteps. <laughs> and uh, he got me uh, a kind of work experience in a, a five-star hotel uh, from the age of 13, just making prawn cocktails and and kind of <laughs> just learning how to cook and slice and dice. It was a really great experience for me. Mm. We're going to start to pan fry them now and get a bit of colour on them, but not too dark. Katahi ka tukuna ki te umu, and then we put it in the oven so that they're cooked through, right? That's exactly right. We're going to pop them in the oven. They're going to take about 35 to 40 minutes, um, but they're going to be in that beautiful, rich sauce simmering away. I just know this is going to be a wonderful, hearty meal for a family. Okay. Um, it's just, it's very exciting making this kind of food for me. Oh, it's amazing to me how much just 600 grams of meat becomes... It goes a long way, yeah, doesn't it? it does. And, you know, this is a dish you could actually make prior. You could prepare a lot of these things, you know, the day before. Uh, you know, if you've got a busy life, you could do it the night before. All right. This is our this pre-made. Is our one. This is our pre-made one. So uh, if you'd like to pour the sauce over those. Okay. We're just going to pop that in the oven. So they would take like 30, 30 to 40 minutes. While they're cooking, I thought we could make some pasta together. Parawari murapa, pasta. Huh? So what do we need to do first? Well, this is the fun bit. Well, we actually need a pot for boiling the pasta. Aye. So maybe if you could find one Aye. for me, that'd be great. Matsino noe, so great big Wonderful. one. Wonderful. Fantastic. I'll get this on the boil. What team are you on? Are you team salted water or team not salted water? One of my food heroes, uh, Giovanni Pilo, yeah, he told me to put um, maybe 12 grams of salt into a litre of water. Uh, he said it's got to taste like the sea, but not any sea. It's got to taste like the Mediterranean Sea. It's got to be super salty. And it's no tohu tohu, so that's <laughs> amazing. It's, it's a truckload yep. of salt. So I'm going to show you how to make a pasta now. Maybe we'll do a fettuccine. 
So we're just going to put the flour on the on the board here. Had them on more, and what sort of flour we got there? Uh, that's like a, a pasta flour. It's a double zero flour. It's just a really hard flour, really robust. And we're going to pop, it in. make a little well. You would like to crack the eggs yeah. in. Let's just get it going. It's like the big crater lake on the mountain. Yes, it is. You can see the paste it's starting to get thicker, and we just start to put some flour in. Would you like to have a go? Ah, Yeah. And you start to bring a little bit in as you go yeah. wider. And I always like to just put a, a splash of olive oil in there, mm -hmm. just to give it a little bit of elasticity. It's starting to solidify now, so you can just start to bring it all together and just work it around and make sure that the uh, the dough picks up all the excess flour. Mm -hmm. It's in pity and it's really binding together. It is it? really binding together, yeah. So you can really feel it now. It's got, it's got that nice elasticity to it. Um, I, I like to rest it sometimes. You get a better dough at the end of the day. Uh, there's one we made earlier that has been rested. So we are probably cut into quarters. Now, a mistake people make when they're making pasta is that they do lots and lots of flouring. And what that does, that actually interferes with the dough and it becomes like a stiffer dough because it absorbs some of the moisture. It's good to have a little bit of flour, but not a lot. It's just very delicate amount. And I usually try and keep it on one side rather than both sides. So basically all we do is, is put it through the machine, like so. And how the number? So our setting well, here is the biggest right one. Right now it's yeah. the largest setting, probably work it down to about two or three. Mm -hmm. And then as we go through the, the notches, we start to fold over. It's all about layers that will build up that, the, the texture in the pasta. We like to do our pasta 10 times through the machine. We feel that uh, we get a better pasta. And then we can probably go to making the fettuccine and hanging it Ooh. as well. How do you even exactly do that? Right. So you change right. the handle into the cutter. Right. So we're going to use fettuccine. Have you noticed I haven't gone too thin because I do like a little bit of bite in my pasta. We could actually flour it for the cutting. So. I'm going to ask you to catch the fettuccine mm -hmm. at, the, at, the, at the end there. Right. And then if you can just use our wonderful uh, pasta rack. Right. With the here, So how long do we leave it to dry for? You know, it's not always necessary to, uh, to dry it, but, uh, you know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes just to get some fresh air through it, maybe right. help it stiffen up a little bit. Right. So it's going to move quite quickly now, mm -hmm. maybe two, three minutes in the boiling water, then out, and we'll check on our lovely meatballs. So here you have it, Stacey. You've got a, a beautiful polpetti with uh, fresh pasta. Mm. Mm, wow. That tastes so beautiful. Oh, thank you. This sort of pasta really does taste different. It's got so much more flavour. Mm. It's got a nice texture as well. It's not been overcooked. Hey, mama, hooky. You know, I was a little bit worried as going, Sean Conley, maybe this will be really hard, but. It was a beautiful way to discover how easy a simple but perfect family meal can be. Katsuhi Kiterai, I'm totally going to remember this and all these tips, so thank you so much. Thank you, Stacey. Now, I really enjoyed being here today and just be able to share these beautiful family meals. It means a lot to me and, and to be able to cook like this and so traditionally, it, it, uh, it's something special.